Greetings, everyone. This is Steam Team Read Up UK, CC Trainer Ling, here to bring you another episode review from Season 6 of The Loud House. Today's episode is titled Bummer Camp. First, we'll discuss the plot, and then my thoughts and critiques with my final score. So, let's get right into it. In this episode, the kids go to Camp Macedon to help their gramps get ready for the season after all the counselors quit, but they quickly realize why they quit after seeing the kind of old-fashioned fisherman-style training Leonard has everyone doing. The kids try to help Leonard get more accustomed to how the camp is meant to be run, but he feels he's not truly cut out to run Macedon and decides to head back to his old life as a fisherman, but not until his grandkids convince him to stay. In the end, they managed to get Macedon ready for the opening day as they learned to make the camp work on both land and sea. Well, that concludes the plot of the episode, so now we come to my thoughts and critiques. Before I get to reviewing the episode itself, there's one thing that's worth mentioning when the kids first arrive at the campgrounds. Lenny is seen driving Vanzilla, something she once tried to do back in the season 1 episode Driving Miss Hazy and could never become street legal, which seemed to be the direction the show was going to take with her character from there on out. However, the production code for Bummer Camp is listed as 610, and Driver's Dread is listed as 609. Originally, the latter was supposed to air back in April of 2022, but was pulled from the schedule. I'm not sure why Nickelodeon couldn't just switch the premiere dates for episodes 609 and 610, so sequentially everything would make more sense in terms of original episode television airings, but I don't think it truly matters. Even with this unintended spoiler for an episode that was going to be released one week after Bummer Camp, seeing Lenny behind the wheel shows how her character is expanding for the better. Anyway, let's get on with the review for the episode at hand. We see the return of Camp Macedon, something I seriously thought was going to be a one-and-done deal from the episode Camped, so kudos to the writers for bringing it back, which means they brought back Leonard Loud, who, just like in his debut, still can't figure out how a cell phone works. At first, I thought that was just some random comedy bit to show how much of an old man he is, but then I started thinking there might be more to it than that. Because he spent most of his time on the open sea as a fisherman, he he pretty much forgot what it was like to do things as a, well, regular person. He was running the camp the same way he ran his boat. His way of training his grandkids to be the new camp counselors was like training them to be fishermen, and clearly they were not used to that kind of lifestyle. And it's reasonable to believe the campers wouldn't want to come to Macedon if they're going to do fisherman-specific activities like catching fish barehanded and scraping barnacles off canoes. One would expect the camp to embrace the more traditional way of having fun, like doing archery, water skiing, and making s'mores. The kids tried to help their grandfather get readjusted to how he used to enjoy Camp Macedon back in the old days, but his fisherman instincts took over and that tree target and Lola ended up on the receiving end of Leonard's behavior. As exaggerated as his actions were, I can't really fault him for being the way he was presented. He's an old man stuck in his ways, and you can't just change your habits in an instant after so many years, although maybe finding something other than lake trout to use as an extra ingredient in s'mores wouldn't hurt. I mean, I guess you could make the argument how he wasn't acting like a dedicated fisherman at the end of the episode camped, although to be fair, I'm not sure how you can connect a life at sea to a three-legged race. But either way, I see Leonard as a good representation of the typical retired person after leaving the workforce. They need to find something to do to fill the void of no longer working, and that usually involves doing something that's related to the job they've been doing all their lives, or at least trying to apply their job experience to whatever it is they want to do, since it's really the only thing they know, something Leonard directly points out. Leonard thought he could use his fisherman expertise to run Camp Macedon, but like Luna said, that only worked when he was out on the ocean. In a sense, you honestly can't blame Leonard for wanting to sell off Macedon and go back to his old life on his boat. As much as he loved and cherished the camp, he figured he couldn't escape who he really was, a fisherman, and how he really wasn't cut out to be a camp counselor at all. That's when his little minnows had to step in to stop him from walking away, so now would be a good time to talk about the kids. Collectively, they were the biggest positive of the whole episode. They drove all the way to Camp Macedon not just to help their grandfather when he was in a pinch, but their main reason for going at all was just to spend time with him. They got super emotional in the beginning when they were told of the possibility of the camp closing down and Leonard returning to the sea, meaning he was going to leave his grandchildren not long after being reunited with them for the first time, since I would assume any of them were born, and none of the kids were going to stand for that. Now, I know somebody could say he could have just given up on Macedon and not feel obligated to go back to being a full-time fisherman, but like I said earlier, some people that have been doing one specific job all their lives 
wives can't just abandon a lifestyle they've been accustomed to after so many decades. They need to find something to keep themselves occupied, and Leonard contemplating the idea of going back on the ocean is not exactly too far-fetched. Even if Leonard's earlier warning from their FaceTime call did prove to be true, the fact the kids were willing to spend a week with him on the water was the biggest selling point to the story. They showed how even though they're not good at being fishermen, they were willing to do whatever it took to be fishermen if it meant spending time with the grandfather who had been absent for most of their lives. If that's not a sign of love, I don't know what is. Them wanting to embrace the fisherman lifestyle opened Leonard's eyes into realizing that if his grandkids can make it work on his boat, maybe he can make Camp Macedon work as well. By the end, it's clear Leonard dialed back on his fisherman mentality thanks to his grandkids, although I don't think a normal camp counselor would be as brave as a sea dog to go one-on-one -on -one with a giant fish after a camper got swallowed up while water skiing. Speaking of which, I want to quickly acknowledge my two favorite moments of the episode. First, there's the scene with Lynn riding the giant fish and then wanting to throw down with it after it flung her onto the shore, and then there's Lily talking. It's a rarity hearing her speak in somewhat comprehensible sentences, but whenever she does talk, it's just adorable. Just adorable. That's really all I can say. Overall, this episode was pretty solid. We got some continuation with Camp Macedon. Leonard had a few funny moments when he tapped into his fisherman side when he was trying to keep it under wraps, and of course the kids went through all that fisherman stuff not just for the camp, but for the grandfather they didn't want to lose so soon. If anything, the story did a fairly acceptable job of demonstrating how retired people can't seem to let go of their old workforce way of doing things, and how that can sometimes be a detriment to both them and others. Throw in some giant fish and Lily talking, and you have an episode worth watching. With that said, I give Bummer Camp an 8.8 .8 out of 10. Well, folks, that concludes my review of Bummer Camp. I will end this review with something that caught my attention just as the episode was finishing up. The giant fish is referred to as a lake sturgeon. That got me thinking about the fishmen from the episode Scales of Justice, who were also referred to as lake sturgeons. When you compare the fish between the two episodes and real life pictures, it's plain to see that the fish in Bummer Camp looks nothing like a lake sturgeon. It's missing those little whisker things near its mouth, so I'm not sure why they would call it a lake sturgeon. I'm not saying this contributes to my final rating of the episode, it's just another one of those moments where you say, huh, that's weird. But anyway, as far as the rest of the episode goes, what did you guys think of it? Love it? Hate it? Something you would add? Change? Keep it as it is? Let me know in the comments below, and make sure to subscribe to this channel for the latest Loud House content. That's going to do it for me, I'll catch you guys for the next video, but until then, this is Steam Team Read UK, CC Trainer Ling, signing off. Peace out, home slices.